This is a monster of a question, and there are so many parts together. One of the ways that you can do it, just by looking at it, is if you have a look at the second page, there's part B, part two, part one, and part two, and you're like, man, how many, how far could they nest this thing? So this is a very, very long question. Many, many pieces that all come together, and um, all heading towards part B, part five. So there's a lot to this. Let's have a look at part A and understand how they get this trigger result, which we're going to use later on. I've begun the proof. So you can see I start with the left hand side because it's easy to go from the expansion. This is just stating, this is just quoting what the result is. Where do I go from here in order to get to the result they want? I'm only like one or two lines off. Um, times sine A sine B by cos A cos B on cos A cos B. Hold on. Uh, okay, yeah, all right. So I'm interested because if you have a look at the form that they've given it to you in, you can do that, but it seems to me like it might be easy just to take a factor out. Like you're, you're multiplying by something and dividing by something, but being that the next, the result we're trying to prove has a cos A, cos B out the front, yeah? I'm just going to take that out right now and say, well, that's one plus. Okay, now if I've got this inside, then both of these things have been divided by cos A, cos B, right? And if I divide that, well, that's, that's the result, isn't it? Now, being that it's a uh, result to prove, and they've given me the result, oops, that's cos, I'm going to go ahead and actually write that line, even though it's somewhat trivial to get to the result that I need. So I've got this. Okay, so that was part A, part one. Part two then says, okay, Given some particular values on A and B, um, those angles. By the way, just look at the inequalities for a second. Just look at them briefly. What does this mean? Could you give me some words for A and B? Um, B's acute. Okay, B is acute. That's the first thing I can say. And A is obtuse. Okay, so being that, yeah, you have a look at this next part, right? If they're suggesting, you see that bit down the bottom? A minus B equals pi on 2. That means the difference between A and B is pi on 2. So for example, um, let's go into degrees because it'll be easier to think of the numbers. If b were 10, then a would be 100. If b were 20, then a would be 110. Whatever, you go 100, uh, 90 degrees forward, right? So just from the inequalities, you don't know that much about a. But when you see that next piece that they're giving you, that final result, a minus b equals pi on 2, that tells you, okay, b is acute, a is obtuse. So just so you can see that and not get you know clouded by all of the notation, that's what it actually means. Okay. So if I know that those things are the case in the inequalities, if 10a, 10b is equal to negative 1, right? then what happens to this first line? What, what? This thing, this whole thing here, cos a minus b, this whole right hand side collapses to 0. Does that make sense? Like you're solving something that's been factorized, right? So if this is the case, then this evaluates to zero, okay? Now we know for cos whatever equals zero, there's an infinite number of solutions given your values of a and b, but a and b have just been restricted, right? So therefore I can say there's only one solution to this in the domain that's been provided to us, right? In other words, a minus b is going to only be pi on two. Um, and I'm going to say that because um, a is acute, sorry, A is obtuse, and B is acute. So that restriction gives me this fact, okay? So file that away, and then get ready to um, use it in this next part. So have a look, it's a basketball player. Now, you remember I said to you, this is a projectile motion question. Look, there's a projectile in the basketball. But it's not a very projectile motion-y kind of question because they give you all of the pieces that are required in projectile motion. They've given you the equation for horizontal displacement and the equation for vertical displacement. I'm just going to write those down because we're going to need them shortly. Part B, part 1. So I get given my Vt cos theta. And I've got my Vt sine theta take away. So normally, for a projectile motion question, where do I begin? Ordinarily, where do I begin? X double dot equal to zero, Y double dot equal to zero. Very good. So by definition, horizontally, there's no acceleration after the initial projection. And then vertically, you've got gravity. Now, have a look at my vertical displacement equation. Where's gravity in this equation? Where is it? 
it's the it's the minus phi t squared, right? Because it would have started from minus ten, would have integrated up to minus ten t, and then would integrate one more step up to minus five t squared. So you recognize it. If you see that minus five or the minus four point nine, that's kind of the giveaway, right? Depending on what gravitational constant they chose. All right, so you're not required to prove these equations. That's nice. So when you turn over, you have a look at this result that's required to be proven. Required to prove. And you look at it and you say, my goodness, what on earth is this? That's a subtraction, okay? And it's three marks. Um, this is a little bit like the style of the question I showed you uh, a day or two ago. No, two ago. Where um, this first part, it's like, whoa, where do I even, like this part, it's, it's, it's hard to access this, right? It doesn't look like something you've obviously seen before, which is why they've given you these, right? They're trying to say, look, we, we know you can get this. It's kind of routine to get this. You just integrate your four times and you're fine. Now I want to see if you can use this, okay? <coughs> now, having been given these equations, there's one other piece of information in the question that they tell us that will help us get to here. Look at how part one starts. What do I know about this particle, actually, this, this ball? What do I know about it? Okay, I have a, a set of coordinates that it goes to, right? So d comma h, they're significant because they're the coordinates of the hoop, I think it is, right? So the player lands the shot, presumably. Now what this does is that this connects these two equations together, right? It means for some value of t, for some particular time that you can think of, which I don't know and I don't need to know because if you have a look at the rest of the question, it's nothing to do with time, okay? For some particular time, the x value will take this and simultaneously the y value will take that, okay? So therefore, I've got to put all of this together, I've got to combine all of them into one piece to try and get this relationship, okay? So where I'm going to begin is I'm going to say, well, what time is that? What time is that? I'm um, not to find out what that is, but so that I can put that into the other equations, right? So I'm going to say at time, I'm going to designate it. I'm going to give it a name just so I can talk about it. I'm just going to say, well, it's the final time. It's like you've landed the hoop, right? So you can call it anything you like. I'm going to call it time omega because omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. We'd call it Z, but we use Z for other things. So at this final time, right, it's just a constant I'm choosing. I know what the x-coordinate is, right? x equals d. Okay, so therefore I'm just going to bring that into this um, horizontal displacement equation. I'm going to say, <coughs> therefore, d equals v times time omega cos theta. Okay, whatever time omega happens to be. So I'm just going to rearrange that so I know what the time is. Looks like I just have to divide through. And now I have, in terms of the distance I am from the hoop, in terms of how fast I throw, how hard I throw that ball, and what angle I, I project it at, I know when the ball's going to land in the hoop, okay?